want to continue this session on how to have a great house church meeting. If you missed the first one, go back and have a look at that. This is part two of how to have a great house church meeting. I've probably been to somewhere between 1,200 and 1,500 house church meetings um, in the last 25 odd years or so. And I've seen some things that really work. And when they're all happening in the course of a month, then you've got a working house church. One is gratitude. The house church is a, a community of thankful people. And when they come together, they want to worship God. And they're pressing into God during the week. So they're seeing God do stuff. They're prayerful. They're seeing answers to prayer. And when they come together, they want to report of what God is doing. And I think having some time at the beginning to report on what God has done in my life, how's he challenged me, how's, how's he changed me, how's he encouraged me, um, and let's report on that and let's say thank you God as part of our early time together, perhaps over the meal that I talked about before, and saying thank you to God and offering gratitude to him for what he's done is an awesome thing to do when we gather together. And we can express that in song, sure, um, I love music and um, singing and, and all of that, but that has to come from the heart as well. So it's not just about, okay, let's have our singing time. Let's watch three YouTube clips. No, we want to come because we're aware of who God is and what he's done, what he's done for us in Jesus and what he continues to do through Christ in our lives by his spirit every week. And we come with grateful hearts, thanking God for that. And we encourage each other. And we don't all sit there like little Mises, um, you know, not squeaking much at all. We come with grateful hearts. We come with shouts of joy. We're busting to share how good God is and what he's done. And so this gets back to everyone participating. We want to hear from everyone about how God has been at work. So that's the first thing, gratitude. Um, the second thing that we want to do when we gather together is discover. We want to discover something new tonight or today. We want to discover something new about who God is and about how he operates and about how we can know him more, about how we can follow him more. We want to discover in what areas of our life does he want us to uh, repent or walk in obedience. We want to discover more of God and his ways. Now, the most obvious way to do that is open the Bible. Yes, the Bible. I hope you bring one to your times together of house church. Um, I hope your Bible is well worn. Bring it and let's open it and let's read and discover what God has revealed about himself in his word. The word of God is the foundation for all that we discover about who God is and what he wants us to do. And it's not just about reading the word. It's not just about understanding the word. It's about becoming wise. And how do you become a wise person? You become a wise person by doing the word. If we're not doing the word, we deceive ourselves, it says in James. So we want to discover what God has for us to do. We also want to encounter God. Now, we've talked about discovering God through his word. We also encounter God through his word. And we encounter God through the activity of the spirit in our midst. And the gifts of the spirit that are spoken of in 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 14 and in other areas of scripture, this is Jesus manifesting his presence in our midst. And we want to give God space. So we shouldn't be in a rush to move from this to this to this to this. And we shouldn't chew up all this time in intellectual discussion and concepts that go nowhere. So that's why the discovery time needs to focus on what is God saying? What am I discovering about him? And how does he want me to put that into practice? That's what we're trying to discover. Now we encounter his spirit to empower us to live this life that we've discovered that we should be living. And so we want to have a, an opportunity to encounter God, particularly through prayer and by listening to the spirit and by praying for one another and by listening to God and speaking his word from his spirit 
to each other. That's such an important thing to do. So house church is not just a Bible study and Bible studies have their place, but a house church community gathered together doesn't just want to discover, it wants to encounter, encounter God through his word and through his spirit, through each other. When we come together, each one has a gift to contribute. This is the time when we can contribute in that way and we can bless one another with the words that God is giving us for one another. Such an important part of our time together. And the fourth part about how to have a great house church meeting is ACT. So grateful, discover, encounter, and act. We're grateful to God. We're discovering more of who he is through his word. We're encountering his presence among us and we're acting on what he has shown us to do. Now, this won't happen in the meeting, actually. This will happen between meetings. But we get a sense within the meeting, where do we need to act? What is God saying to me that I need to put into practice this week? What changes do I need to make? Where does he want me to serve? Who does he want me to talk to? All of these things are part of acting in obedience to what God has shown us through his word. And then when we come back together, we can report on that and you can see how that feeds into being grateful. So this is a cycle. We act, we step out doing what God has shown us to do, not just on our own. We can do it in the company of other people, other believers, other other brothers and sisters within the house church, acting what God is telling us to do. We come back together. We're grateful for how God has been at work. We discover more about him. We encounter more of his presence and more of his spirit. And then we go out again, sent out in the power of the spirit to live to God's glory in the world.